Now that we have set up the appdb context file and also configured that file with an SQL Server database, let us add some test data to our database. For that, let us go to Visual Studio and see it in action. In here we are going to add a new file, so for that let us go to Solution Explorer, then inside the data folder we are going to add a new file, so add, then a class, we are going to name this file appdb initializer, so appdb initializer, because we are going to use this file to initialize our database. Let us click the add button. Now inside this class I'll add a new method and we are going to use this method to add data to our database if our database is empty. So for that I'll just type public static void, I'll name this one seed, it takes as a parameter the i application builder and let us name it application builder, let us import the namespace for the i application builder and that is the microsoft.aspnetcore.builder and then inside here we are going to create a scope for the application services. So for that I'll just use the using block so we make sure that the instance is closed after this code is executed. So using var service scope is equal to application builder dot application services dot create scope. Now let us import the namespace for the create scope and that is the microsoft.extensions.dependency injection. Then inside here I'll just create a reference to the appdb context. So for that var context is equal to service scope dot service provider dot get service then pass as a parameter the app db context file. Now by using the context reference we are going to check if we have any books in our database. So for that if context.books.any so if we have books in our database but we are interested when we don't have any books in our database. So if we don't have any books in our database then we are going to add a couple of books. So in this case we are just going to add two books but that is the idea. Then in here let us type context.books.addRange when you want to add more than one book. Then in here new book. Let us import the namespace for the book class so that will be using data.models and then in here we are going to define the values for the book properties. Let us also bring the other curly bracket down. In here we are going to define the title and that will be let's say first book title then a description that will be the first book description. If you want to see all the other book properties you can just right click then go to peak definition and here you have all the properties. Now let us scroll down. So after the description is read, let us set that to true. Then we have the date read because if you read a book you need to also add a date read that will be date time dot now. Let us say we read it 10 days ago. So add days then in your minus 10 and since we read this book we need to also provide a rate so rate will be equal to let's say 4. Next we need to provide a genre so let us say the genre will be biography then we need to also provide an author an author will be let's say first author and we need to also provide the cover URL and the date added. So just after the author I'll type cover URL is equal to HTTPS and just three dots and the date added will be date time dot now. 
that I'll save the changes. I'll now close the book definition. I'll just copy this book. So control C, then control V. On the second book, I'll set the is red to false. Then remove the date red. Also remove the rate. Change the title to be second. And also the description to be second book description. Now, don't forget to add the semicolons at the end. And after you have added a range of books, you need to also call the context.savechanges method. Now in here you see that we have added two books, but we have not defined any IDs for the first book or the second book. And that's because the entity framework core will generate an ID for us since we have set the ID property to be the primary key for the book entity. Now, let us save the changes and go to the startup.cs file. You go to the solution explorer, then startup.cs. Scroll down to the end of this file. So inside the configure method, just after the use endpoints, I'll type app db initializer dot seed and then pass as a parameter the i application builder. So if you scroll up in here, the i application builder for this method is the app name. So let us scroll down and pass app as a parameter and don't forget the semicolon. Now here I see that we have a typo. So let us go to the app db initializer file, solution explorer. In here, right click, then rename. So in here, let us add the i and z and then press enter. Yes, we want to change all the references. And here now we have appdb initializer dot seed method. Before we run Visual Studio, let us go to the appdb initializer and scroll up in here and put a breakpoint. Let us save the changes and run the application. So we see that we reached the breakpoint. Now you can either press F10 or you can just click over the step over button. So I'll just click in here. We are creating the context reference. Then we check if we have any books in our database. We don't have because we just started the app. We add a range of books, so two books in this case. And then next we call the save changes method. Everything looks fine. You can just click the continue button and you can see that the app ran successfully. Now, let us go back to Visual Studio. In here, I'll just stop the app, then go to the Server Explorer, then just click on the database and refresh, then expand the database, go to Tables, then right click on the Books table and select the show table data option. And in here you can see that we have two books. The first book which has an ID of one, the second book has an ID of two. And in the first book we have the is read set to true. We have data for the date read and rate, but for the second book since the is read is set to false, we don't have the date read or the rate value. 